Let's see if we can figure out which solar panel works best for you. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So I often get emails and questions when I'm at Hamfest and things about uh, solar panels and which one do I recommend. And people are always curious about the size of them, the weight, uh, how much output they're going to get out of it, and then how much panel do you need. Uh, and I can't really help you solve the how much panel do you need. That's something that is personal and will change with every setup uh, that, you, that you can take out. So often you'll see me with a 60-watt panel. Sometimes you'll see me with a couple of 60-watt panels. And other times I only need a small 30-watt panel to get by. So we're going to be taking a look at three different solar panels panels today. I do have some notes here on my phone and we're going to take a look at some of the specs of these panels as far as the uh, dimensions where they're closed, the dimensions when they're open, the weights, and some of the things I like or dislike about them. So the first one up is a Rock Pals 60 watt solar panel and that's this guy here. Now, this thing retails uh, right now as of the day of this recording. It's $150 bucks and there's a $30 off coupon uh, that you can use on Amazon. So, And guys, I'll leave links to all of these down in the description below if you're interested in checking one of those out. Uh, closed up, this one is 14 inches by 14 inches. When it's opened, it's 14 inches by 44 inches. And this is the heaviest one of the bunch coming in at six pounds and five ounces. Now, the main reason I bought this one was it has built-in kickstands. Uh, after it came in and I got to playing with it, it's a little too heavy really for ham radio use uh, in, in the way I like to work portable radio. So this is a good panel. I definitely like this panel but it's going to be reserved more for the RV and I'm going to use it as an additional 60 watt panel when we're out and about with the RV. One of the things I really like about this panel that the others do not have is this one comes right out of the box with power poles and the others I had to modify with uh, modify the cables to get power poles on them. Now for output you've got a small little black box hopefully you guys can see that right there and on that you've got a couple of different connectors you've got uh, two USB A and one USB C as well as a DC output uh, it's a barrel jack connector output so it's got plenty of uh, connections on it that you can charge pretty much anything you want to we are taking a look at the rock pals 60 watt solar panel and we're getting about 2.1 amps from this one next up let's talk about the power film 30 watt panel now this is the only uh, 30 watt panel in the bunch so when we're doing the output or looking at the output of this panel we're going to have to double that number so that we get a fair comparison uh, between all three of these panels this one though uh, closed up is 13 inches by 8 inches when it's completely opened up it's 25 inches by 41 inches and it weighs one pound and 15 ounces. Now, that is the lightest one of the bunch. Powerfilm makes a fantastic panel. The downside to the Powerfilm is always cost. Uh, right now, the 30 watt panel retails for $468. Uh, if you want the 60 watt version that would be comparable to the other two panels in this bunch today, then you're looking at $859. The prices of these have really gone up uh, in the last couple of years. When I bought this 30 watt panel, I thought it was expensive then, and I only paid 300 bucks compared to uh, today's prices. That's a bargain. Okay, so here is the readings for the power film panel, and you can see that it's putting out roughly 1.08 amps. Of course, we would need to double that since this is the 30-watt panel of the bunch. 
As for output, the power film has the least amount of ports. In fact, it has exactly one. And I have made up a cable that attaches to this and then has power poles on the other end. But uh, you are limited to a single uh, power output that plugs into the solar panel or actually the solar charge controller. Next up on the list is the top solar solar panel. And this is really the one I grab more often than anything else. I just find that I really like this panel. I like how small it collapses down. Uh, and I like the output, the higher output levels uh, of this panel. Closed up, this one comes in at 8 by 10 inches. Fully opened, it is 20 by 38 inches. Uh, it weighs in at four pounds. Now, this thing comes with some stands with it, and I am not a fan of those stands. You guys may have seen the full review that I did on this particular panel. I actually, uh, I, I think I might have thrown those stands in the RV. I might have just stuck them over in the corner somewhere. Um, they can be made to work, but it's really not a great solution. This is the second version of this particular panel. I also have the first version that I bought roughly two years ago and have been very, very pleased with it. That's why I bought the second panel. Now, for price, this one is uh, the best price of the bunch. Currently, on Amazon, this one is 99 bucks out the door. As far as power outputs on it, you've got a DC 19 volt, you've got a USB-A, a USB-C, and a DC 14.4. The 19 volt is the one that you use to connect to the solar charge controller. And now we are looking at the top solar 60 watt panel and you can see that it's given us about 2.41 amps. Now for a size comparison, with these all three laying side by side, you've got the top solar on the left, the rock piles in the middle, and the power film on the right hand side. And then the three of them laying side by side while closed up. Again, we've got the top solar panel on the left, we've got the rock piles in the middle, and we've got the power film 30 watt panel on the right. So what's my opinion of the three panels? Well, of the three, my least favorite is the Rock Pals. Not that there's anything wrong with the Rock Pals panel itself. I do like the kickstands that are built into it, but it's just overall too big, too bulky, and it weighs too much. Uh, I get, you know, roughly the same output as with the top solar panel, which packs up uh, much smaller. Downside to the top solar is that I don't have the built-in stands that come with it and the ones that uh, do come with that particular panel, I'm just not a fan of. If I could pick any of these panels, it would definitely be the Powerfilm panel. I love that panel. There are a couple of drawbacks to that. First, price. Uh, power film panels are ridiculously expensive and it's hard for a lot of us to justify the price of those panels. Second is they're flimsy. So you can't stand those up somewhere like you can the other two panels. You either have to lay that flat on the ground or you've got to find a surface that you can hang that panel up against. So uh, I know in the past when I've been at field day and using that panel, I have either laid it across the windshield of the vehicle or I've laid it, um, or I'm sorry, hung it off of the roof, like off of the uh, cargo rack on the side of the car. Both of those methods work well. The power film panel is more efficient than the other two, and that really comes into play early in the mornings and late in the evenings when we've got that uh, low sun angle. The power film is going to outproduce the other two panels, but at the cost, I'm not sure it's really worth it. I just don't think that uh, you can really justify it uh, for that price point. If you're looking for the lightest weight panel though, well, there's no other way to go besides power films. So guys, I hope you find this information helpful and I hope it helps you to make a decision on which panel will work best for you. I appreciate you tuning in today. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.